All right, guys, welcome back to Daily Dose of My Annoying Voice. Um, a friend stopped by yesterday, um, and we're shooting shit, and it brought up an interesting thing about what his dad used to do. And uh, we're talking about it, and came to a, a point, if you start to look at all these, these are dial indicators. These ones are very, extremely high accurate dial indicators for, for measuring off anything, you set this up and you clamp these pieces in, then you, you sweep and if you're adjusting a machine, tra tramming a, a bridge board or a lathe or any kind of machine and process, I mean, they can really be used to measure anything, anything at all. But the machinists mostly you'll see these, uh, these guys running with, but you'll notice something about most of these. So five ten thousandths um, indicator five ten thousandths of an inch <clears throat> this will measure jeweled uh, this guy here is um, trying to get it to so you can see it it, uh, it also says jeweled this is a this measures to one ten thousandth of an inch so each one of these little lines one ten thousandth of one inch pretty accurate I mean this thing you sneeze that thing moves but um, but the thing is all, all these like I said are jeweled what the hell does that mean jeweled is um, any precision instrument uh, that's been made for, for over a hundred years uh, late 1800s they started doing this um, the jewel is the bearing they use jewels for bearings inside these pieces. So I got, um, like this was one I took apart, had this, uh, this face on it, but <clears throat> this one was, was beat up. So I didn't mind pulling it apart to, to sort of show. And so the jewel part, you can kind of see this thing will probably never zoom that close. Well, you can get the color there, but um, right there. That is a jewel. Red, so hopefully you guys know if you buy your wife's jewelry. Red is a uh, ruby. So as you can see, this plunger, when it moves in, would be connected and the dial goes through on this, uh, uh, what you call the armature per se, here and your needle would spin around. So that little tiny jewel right there is a ruby. They use it as a bearing on all these tiny, tiny little things. And using it as a bearing is great because they don't need lubrication. Metal to metal needs lubrication all the time. Oils and, and grease, so whichever way, you know, like cars and machines and things, you gotta grease them, you gotta oil them. Problem is in instruments like this, you're not gonna take these apart and put oil in them. And the oil will break down. So if it was originally designed with oil, it'll break down in 10 years that things junk. The conversation with a buddy of mine coming to this is that uh, where they're used a ton, watches. Uh, it's my Britling here. This is, a, this is a 25 joule watch. So this Britling Colt has 25 jeweled bearings inside it. It means a lot of the movements inside the watch are lubricated uh, with a, on a bearing surface with a jewel. Ruby is pretty much most common for for all these types of instruments. Uh, a ruby on the the scale is a, a, the Mohs scale. Um, Mohs was a German um, uh, mineral mineral mineralologist. Uh, would have, a guy that deals with rocks. Um, he figured out in 1812 that, that he made this scale of how hard minerals were, uh, be it... Uh, rubies and sapphires, any kind of gemstones, diamonds. So a ruby comes in at 10 on a Mohs scale. The only one hotter, actually there's two hotter, don't even know how to pronounce the other one, but uh, diamond is 10. A scale from one to 10, diamond is 10, uh, rubies are nine. So <clears throat> what what you would find is that, uh, that's my friend Danny that came by, Danny Noons. Uh, his dad was a watch repairman um, many, many years. 
when you see old watches, um, new watches, they don't really advertise as much anymore. They don't even put it on the face. It doesn't even say it's a jeweled watch. But what they used to do was advertise a lot that it would be a 17 jewel watch, a 27 jewel watch. And that meant how accurate it was and how good it was. And to, and to do that, it was a lot of machining hand tools. Before the 1930s, they used to lap the gems in by hand. So they would seat that by hand then they started um, machining both services and dropping them in so they were much better replaced but sometimes watches and pocket watches before the 1930s are extremely extremely expensive to repair because they have to be hand lapped in and you have to fit each gem because they were hand fit originally so fitting them back in isn't a simple process not that any of this shit is simple but uh but that's what all these things mean the jeweled and um uh, on another note, too, don't go, you know, <clears throat> ripping your grandfather's watch collection apart and pulling the jewels out and think you're you know, going to buy another house. These are all these here, and, and especially the watch, but no matter how old these are, well, you can see this indicator's from 74, was the last inspection. So these are all synthetic. These aren't real rubies. They're not real gemstones that they, they mined out of the earth. They made these synthetically since the... Uh, late 1800s at some point they started doing it um, the Vernoul process of making gemstones um, Vernoul is a French chemist Vernouli, Vernoul, I don't know how you pronounce it but he was a French chemist that came up with the process of making fake gemstones, synthetic gemstones um, for purposes like this a lot of times you guys might see you go to the hardware store you buy a a diamond tool bit, uh, a, a diamond uh, hole saw, or a diamond concrete drill bit. Those aren't real diamonds that they're putting on that. They, you don't have, that's why you can buy it for 25 bucks and not $10,000. And Those were made for the specific purpose of just using in tooling or to use like as a bearing, as a surface. Um, but like I said, don't tear it all apart. They're worthless. That, this gem, you pull that ruby out, it's worthless. Um, they came up with that process. A lot of the original ones have, you know, an original, when you buy a diamond, if, you have a, if you're married and you buy your wife a ring, you, the measure of the diamond is uh, co color, cut, and clarity. So the clarity is, is any imperfections. So they started making synthetic, synthetic ones to um, simplify the process and remove any kind of inclusions or imperfections that were in them just made it easier for stuff like this and they made it a lot lot cheaper they could just melt down different powders and chemicals um, to make if it were a ruby if it's you know a diamond encrusted bit there's a lot of different ways they made all this stuff but pretty much when they made the the, the boule and ingot of, of a gemstone they use it in everything semiconductors all those they have so so many uses so many uses for the last uh, hundred years that they've been doing it but but notably watches so when you see a watch a, a good watch you can look them up usually you can look up and see how many gemstone it is how many well jewel they call it a jeweled watch um you know you can look them up you can find them like i said these old ones they usually would label it on it because it sounded impressive but a lot of these i know specifically stare it um made in Ethel, massachusetts too all these uh stare it products um, they would, uh, you could order them either way. You get them jeweled or you could get them, uh, with plain bearing. So sometimes you find these jeweled ones. I met the guy at the bottom paid a little more money or a lot more money. I'm not sure what the difference was, but, uh, that's what it is. That's what, so when you see jeweled on anything, if you're buying an old watch, if you're buying a new watch, look at it, check it out. See these old tools that are jeweled. You ain't going to wear a ruby out. You'll have to move this thing. You can move that the rest of your life. You ain't going to wear that jewel out. I promise. And like I said, don't go raiding all your watch collection, tearing them apart. They're worthless. Just thought you might want to know.